Hello and welcome back to another Old Man Watches. And today we're going to be talking about a 1934 film called The Trail Beyond, starring Jan, John, John Wayne, uh, who is uh, obviously um, quite a well-known name if you know much about the, uh, the history uh, of, uh, of film. Um, so the plot uh, is based on a, a, a novel called The Wolf Hunters, and there have been a couple of other ad adaptations of The Wolf Hunters. Um, basically, the story is that a, uh, a recent college graduate from the United States uh, heads up to Canada to help look for some missing people. Uh, and he's accompanied on this journey by his best friend, uh, who is of Native American background. Uh, and they uncover a secret conspiracy of French-Canadian outlaws. And they take them on, uh, and of course an attractive young woman is going to need saving along the way. I mean, I bet you're surprised about that, aren't you? Um, so that's, that's, that's in a nutshell what this movie is about. Pretty standard uh, Western stuff, basically. Um, so what does this movie feature? Why am I going to talk about it? Well, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to, first of all, though, um, I want to acknowledge Westerns from, from the 30s and 40s are generally speaking problematic films through when looked at through modern eyes um this film is not an especially bad example uh because the bad guys are white excuse me i've got a bit of a cough <coughs> sorry about that um the bad guys are white not native uh and there is a native uh character who is sympathetic he's a good guy albeit very much a secondary good guy because you know john wayne is in this movie but still, you know, even saying this is this is not at all bad by the standards of the time, take it as read that there are going to be issues around uh, representation and how it depicts uh, racial politics. It's just just going to be a thing with a nineteen thirties film. Um, but with all that said and put aside for now, um, what are we going to talk about specifically for this movie? Well, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that this is a B film. It's a B movie, and. In the modern era, we tend to use the term B movie uh, to mean um, the, the movie wasn't very good or the movie was cheap, uh, uh, obviously made on a low budget. And look, both of those things are generally true of actual B movies, um, but B movie comes about very specifically because back in back in the thirties, when you went to the cinema. You got a newsreel and you got cartoons and maybe you got a short like Flash Gordon. And then there was often you know, the feature, which is right at the end, the last thing you watch and there's the reason you came. But then before that, you often had a B movie, like the B side of a single for those of you who kind of remember the days when we bought physical um, media on which to listen to, to songs. Um, and so what that means is that, you know, the people who were making this movie weren't making this movie with anticipation that this was the film people were going to see. Um, you know, this is uh, an additional bonus content, uh, for which obviously they were getting paid to make, for some other feature, which was the reason people actually went to the cinema. You didn't go to the movies to see The Trail Beyond. You went to the movies to see whatever The Trail Beyond was, was on before, and you saw The Trail Beyond on the way. Uh, and Hollywood used to churn out huge numbers of these movies john wayne made something like 80 of them in the space of a decade to give you an idea that's like one every six weeks um so it's worth knowing about this and a lot of other westerns particularly when uh, you know from this era that they weren't necessarily made as movies to watch in and of themselves they were made to be an accompaniment to another film and that's you know that has some certain implications to how the movie was made and what it's setting out to achieve. And it's worth recognising that. Like, even today, today, if you make a cheap movie or a bad movie, those people are still probably trying to make a movie with the intent of getting you to watch that film. The people making The Trail Beyond weren't making The Trail Beyond with the intent to watch you, of having you watch that film. They were making it with the intent that you would watch it before you watch the movie you were actually paying to see. So, yeah, it's, it's worth noting that this is a very, it's, it's a movie made in a very different time and, it, and it, that has some ramifications to what kind of movie it would actually be. The second thing I wanted to talk about is pacing. Um, as a B-movie, The Trail Beyond runs 54 minutes because, you know, this was, this was you know, you, you weren't there to overshadow 
the feature, you were there to lead people into the feature. So generally speaking, these movies top out at at most kind of 65, 70 minutes, 55 minutes, like the length of a sort of prestige Showtime HBO type show um, is the kind of length you would typically see these movies. And if you're going to tell an entire, you know, but you know, it's still a movie, it still has to introduce its entire set of characters, set up its premise, have some st- have some development, and then hit some kind of climax in the space of its runtime. So you need to jam basically everything that a, a movie needs to do into an episode of television type length. And that means you need to get a lot done very fast. The first eight minutes of this film, they feature it features a stack of exposition as they set up the plot, like enough exposition for an entire for the entire movie, practically. Plus a shooting, a fist fight, and a lost treasure map. Like it stacks a bunch of stuff into its first eight minutes. It hits the ground running and just, just doesn't let up for those first ten minutes or so. And that's necessary when you've only got forty five, you know, fifty four minutes to tell your whole story. And you're going to spend the last 10 minutes of the movie on a horse chase, because which is what this movie does. It's the big action sequence. There's a lot of people riding around on horses. Um, and there's a good 10 minutes of that. Um, so pacing you know, is a factor in this movie. It's a factor of all B-movies. It's worth talking about in regards to this film as a feature that it has. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about um, is fisticuffs. Um, so along with stuntmen, Stuntman Yakima Knut, or Knut, I'm not sure how exactly you pronounce his surname, who I suspect you know was was very important to this. John Wayne in the third is developed a bunch of stunts and fighting techniques that are still were still in use decades later within film. Now, I'm not saying that if you watch The Trail Beyond, you're gonna get action like the latest Marvel superheroes film. Modern choreography is way more sophisticated, it's way faster, the stunts are much more extreme. You know, because the the, the you know the safety gear is a lot more comprehensive, um, the, the the digital effects you can use a lot better, um, but the basic core techniques in this movie are a foundation of modern action, and that's an interesting thing about the film. Like you know that um, John Wayne set out in you know in consultation with the stuntman to deliver more convincing on-screen action. And a lot of what they pioneered in these cheapy movies is the foundation of stuff today, which makes it interesting, you know. And, you know, it's simpler than what we see today. It's slower than what we see today. But, I mean, you know, I not so long ago watched some early Bond films. And honestly, the fight scenes in this movie are better (laughs) than, you know, in terms of choreography and convincingness than some of the early Bond films, which were obviously made a good 30 years later and... You know, okay, the first Bond film was extremely cheap for its time um, in terms of its budget, but, you know, we're still an order of magnitude greater than the budget on these sort of films. So this is an interesting thing about these films, and there's plenty of options to choose from. The Trail Beyond is available free on archive.org. Uh, it's out of, uh, it's uh, it's in the public domain. You can go and watch it. I'm not necessarily saying you should, um, but, you know, if you wanted to see an example of this early development of uh, of action on screen it's not a bad place to go and you know it's not long so it won't take you too much time to watch it so those are the three things that i want to talk about you know they're features of the film they're maybe not reasons to watch or not watch it but i thought they were interesting in terms of thinking about film uh, and recognizing what a film is setting out to do and how it's setting out to do it um so that's the trail beyond uh, in terms of what we're going to talk about next, a little bit of a change of pace, Laser Mission from 1989. Um, and, I mean, just from just from that image, you can tell this wants to be James Bond, and boy does it ever. Uh, we'll talk about what that means for the film um, next time. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and catch you in the next one.